something special is happening at the Emirates. The biggest testament to Arteta's impact at Arsenal is they no longer feel like a plucky underdog just happy to be in the title race. They radiate the quiet confidence of a team who know they deserve to be where they are and will only be content with walking away with silverware at the end of the season. This has only been allowed by Arteta's always evolving tactical approach. So let's take a closer look at these tactics. Arsenal pushed City last season, finishing second. So ripping apart his entire tactical philosophy would be foolish. The box 3-4-3 was still a pillar early in the season, with the fullbacks occupying these roles, meaning Zinchenko joined new man Declan Rice in the midfield. And a huge problem that Arsenal faced early on was this narrow build-up shape making it extremely difficult for them to play through the centre, with only 26% of their play coming through the middle of the pitch. And this midfield overload would only be useful if they could actually get the ball to the midfield. When teams pressed less against them, or kept their wingers deeper rather than pressing their extremely narrow centre-backs, it would be extremely difficult for the Gunners to play through the pitch. Zinchenko, when he was on the ball, would do his best to play through the lines at every opportunity. The major problem, however, came when teams were either able to press effectively enough to keep his back to the play, or cut him out of the play entirely. Declan Rice, as a secondary pivot, could still be pressed aggressively, and he's a lot less nimble to quickly get turned and face the play. Rice, while clearly an excellent player, isn't the biggest progressive passing threat, so teams would be much more willing to allow him a little extra space, knowing he'll be much more likely to recycle possession rather than penetrate. This meant that the outfield 10 was split into two blocks, and Arsenal struggled to get the ball to the attacking five, or more specifically, the central three. A huge problem for Arsenal. The Gunners could of course still find men out wide, with the right being the most frequently chosen flank, due to the presence of Odegaard, who is instrumental to the attack. But there was one big problem. It wasn't Arsenal intentionally beginning the play wide, rather, they were marching to the beat of the opposition drum. They weren't building wide, they were being filtered out wide, after which the opposition could then press the isolated man much more aggressively. This had knock-on effects. The lack of central progression through Rice had meant that Odegaard had to drop deep to help with this much more often. And although having Odegaard on the ball anywhere on the pitch is never a bad thing, it would take away from his ability to impact the side higher up in his preferred creative zones. Maybe even worse than that, the telepathic combination play he enjoys with Saka would be a lot more difficult to execute. The one advantage it did provide was creating space here, and White was adept at playing a well-weighted pass into the channel so that Saka could receive in the half space, with the pitch already opened up to him. But this was still not ideal. Mikel Arteta is always in problem-solving mode. It was only a matter of time before he devised a new approach. The first is getting the goalkeeper much more involved in the first phase of play, becoming the third man meaning that a fullback is freed up from doing that job and can move higher up or out wide to cause danger elsewhere. This is particularly effective when opposition sides are willing to be drawn into the press, as the overloads could now be made to count much more. With Arsenal having proven themselves to be a top team last season, teams are a lot less willing to engage in the press, and Arsenal tend to have the third longest passing sequences on average before the opposition is able to tackle or intercept. With no pressure, there is no need to have three centre-backs, and there have been two major ways Arsenal have looked to use the extra man. The first has allowed the Gunners to become masters of slowly strangling their prey. Against lesser sides, they can go full on control mode, switch into a 2-3-5 with one or both fullbacks playing alongside the pivots. And Ben White has been pushing higher and higher recently. This will now allow Arsenal to have more angles to bypass the first line of pressure, particularly if the opposition does then bite on the press. They now also have the extra man in the midfield, simply making it easier to get the ball here, while the forwards Arsenal use mean that they are comfortable temporarily dropping into the midfield to emphasize that overload even more. Ben White is one of Arteta's key men, and this season, he has been getting on the ball almost as much as Declan Rice. He has one of the most dynamic roles on the side, whether he's in the first line or the midfield line. When Saka gets on the ball, he has the license to bomb forward, to form this crucial right side triangle with Saka and Odegaard. White has the capacity to underlap, at which point a fullback can be played in. But if a fullback is dragged narrow, Saka now has more room to attack the outside himself or the inside. If it is a midfielder who follows the half space run, 
then Odegaard can sniff out room to weave some magic. White, again, is just as comfortable with the traditional overlap, where he can then be played in will create much more room for Saka to cut in. The 2-3-5 shape from Arteta is dangerously effective when teams camp in their own half. This line of three makes it almost impossible to transition against, with every clearance seeming to fall to one of these three men as they can cover most of the width of the pitch. Trying to get past a figure like Declan Rice on the transition only serves to make a difficult task an impossible one. Such a solid attacking foundation also frees the attacking five to have much more fluidity or to attack the box, knowing that everything behind them is taken care of, giving Arsenal even more options to hit in attacking zones. But the second way that Arsenal use a back two build-up is what has drawn the eye, and this approach was aided by an injury to a key man. Zinchenko has been crucial since joining from City, but his injury forced Arteta to adapt, and he did so brilliantly. Kivio was drafted in as a left back in his stead, which left an issue in the midfield. As discussed, Rice being left to do all of the progression would be suboptimal, and dragging Odegaard deep made Arsenal blunt up front. Again, White could use his versatility to somewhat mirror the Zinchenko role, which would have been good, but Arteta wanted excellence. A combination of Jorginho and Kai Havertz were the answer. The Italian would step into the midfield, leading to a reshuffle, while Havertz would then push into a forward position, and Declan Rice would have the capacity for more vertical movement to unleash some of his ball-carrying ability on occasion. But most importantly, Arteta still had his elite progressor next to Rice, and Havertz, though he was the striker on paper, still operated here. But where before both of his fullbacks were narrow, now they occupied the more traditional wide roles. Now when the fullbacks received, Arsenal were opting to play wide rather than being forced wide. The compact, narrow opposition shape now had decisions to make. If they stayed true to their game plan of looking to cover the center, Arsenal could quickly shift the ball wide and get into positions to form the wide triangles, or find the winger who was no longer playing with his back to goal. This, of course, would be aided by the willingness of the likes of White on the overlap. Naturally, these compact opposition shapes begin to open up, and that midfield box of Arsenal's would now come into full effect. Jorginho looks to be the first receiver, to use his immense progression ability to then find one of the tens. Again, Arteta is asking questions of the opposition. With no focal point, if the centre-backs try to push up onto these tens, space is created for them to spin into or for the wingers to make diagonal runs into. Kai Havertz in particular has found a new lease of life in this position, almost tailor-made for him, and has been a nightmare for defenders to figure out how to face. He has eight goals and three assists this season, and more than half of these goal contributions have come after this move to the new position. Should the fullbacks try and remain narrow to try and deal with that threat, the switch is on, and the 1v1 against Arsenal's wide men is something that fullbacks would dread. But if it is the pivots that choose to sit off of Jorginho and Rice, now Arsenal can make unchallenged progress into the opposition half and set up camp there and slowly suffocate the opposition. The beauty of Arteta's Arsenal is none of these tactics happen in isolation. At a moment's notice, the left back could push high allowing the winger to occupy the centre-forward role. If they need more support in the first phase, Odegaard can drop deep, with White charging forward and Saka tucking in. The tens can both stay high, or they can be lopsided with one between the lines or operating much wider, whatever it takes to find the advantage. Something different is happening this year, and with the Gunners still firmly in contention for multiple trophies, it could be a legendary season for Arsenal. But where do you think the Gunners will finish? Drop it in the comments below. And next up, check out this video, examining the tactical principles that Arteta carried over from his time under Pep. Click on screen now to check that out.